Hi, I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to talk about healing a baby with an overgrowth of candida. So, first of all, what is candida? This is not our neighbor country to the north. It is actually a yeast, candida albicans. And this is a fungus that likes to, well, technically a yeast. Those of you out there who are microbiologists will correct me there. Uh, so it's a yeast that infects the human body. Now, a lot of us carry this yeast around. It doesn't do us any harm whatsoever. It just rides around. It doesn't bother us. We don't bother it for the most part. However, babies' immune systems are not very good at keeping yeast under control. So yeast may overgrow in babies. The most common way we see that in young infants is an infection called thrush. Thrush appears as white, milky-looking patches uh, inside the mouth, you see them on the tongue, on the insides of the cheeks, on the gums. And the difference between that and milk on the inside of the mouth is that milk rubs off. You can take your finger or a washcloth and rub that milk right off. Yeast doesn't rub off. You can rub away, it's not going anywhere. When yeast infections inside the mouth, also called thrush, become severe, they may even involve the esophagus and cause some real discomfort with swallowing that can interfere with feeds and hydration. So. When we see this, we treat it with usually a medication called nystatin. Nystatin is a yellowish kind of syrupy medicine that you dribble into the mouth. It works where it lands. So you either use the dropper that comes with the bottle to get it where the thrush is, or you can even use a swab or washcloth to move it around and get it where the infection usually is. We use it about four times a day, usually about a half hour before feeds. Now, sometimes the nystatin doesn't do the trick, and we have to go on to an oral medication called fluconazole. The brand name for that is Diflucan. So we do see some resistant yeast and have to do that. The next place that you see an overgrowth of yeast is in the neck folds, sometimes the armpits. This happens in babies who have a lot of skin folds. They often don't have much of a neck to hold the head up over the chest, and saliva and milk and other sort of moisture, sweat, collect down here in these folds. That's a great environment for Canada to live. It loves dark, moist places. And so one of the things you can do is use some powder. You never want the baby to inhale the powder, so maybe put the powder on your hands away from the baby and then put it in there. Nystatin itself comes as a cream, an ointment, or as a powder. So sometimes we'll use the nystatin powder both to kill the yeast and to help control the moisture. If you can, you want to try and keep that area dry, but it can be really hard to get to in babies. Now, the third place we see candida overgrowth is in the diaper area. This usually is a rash that's red. We call it beefy red. You'll see some little red satellite lesions around the rash. It usually involves the areas where skin touches skin. Again, remember those dark, moist places are where candida loves to be. So you can use a powder there. You can keep the skin dry. And again, any of the forms of nystatin may be useful in treating yeast down there. Now, if you see a diaper rash that has pustules, that is not candida. That may be a staph infection, and that can be really serious. It requires a doctor's attention. Likewise, if the rash is just where the skin touches the diaper and not where skin touches skin, the baby may have a reaction to the diaper itself, which can be helped by changing diaper brands. Talking about treating overgrowth of candida in babies, I'm Dr. David Hill.